Hello again. Here I am again. Okay, yeah, I just finished this and um, I had the sketch for a long time and I just, I'm gonna use it for an exhibition in a couple of days in my home island, Kame. And uh, yeah, um, there's not much to say actually. I uh, usually I go more detail, but I let the, this be a little bit more uh, impressionist. Uh, you can see the, the brush strokes and stuff are kind of, yeah, kind of more swoosh swoosh. And the details are a little bit more diluted. Then again, how much detail do we actually need? See the yellow so popping up, but not really like that in in um, real life. Um, yeah, so I think this came quite nice. Maybe we should try to put on some more light. Let's see, ah, shit. Um, so there we are. I think it became quite good depth in it and uh, the light is very nice and maybe someone wants to have it on their wall yeah and the framing expensive framing so I can see here how it's painted that is what I like with paintings that they are painted. I like to see the strokes and brushwork brush of the artist. So that's why I like Rembrandt so much, the later, later Rembrandt. Anyway, um, so thank you for watching and remember to subscribe and share my videos and leave a comment if you want to. That would be nice. Tell what you think. So, if you want to ask me questions, you can just comment and ask and I will answer you. Okay. Have a so, hello to Uh I was thinking about uh, showing you how to... Uh, what I do when I uh, restart from a sketch that has dried. Um, I have a painting here, so I'm going to show you this one. It's a landscape with the, actually my daughter in when she was, I think she was nine or ten. Um, and what I do when I I start working with it again because it has been drying for quite a while, and I'm going to start molding it. And what I do is to put on first, I put on this um, this uh, retouche furnace and then yeah, then some color to get uh, to get the textures uh, to come out and have something to in a way restart uh, the whole process. Well, I'm gonna show you so you can just keep on watching. So, there I am. So, first thing I do is uh, I take this retouche furnace, retouche furnace, and I, since it has dried, all the colors are kind of dried, and I can't really see the colors uh, uh, because it's so dry. and. So that's why I do this, to see how it kind of brings out the contrasts on the canvas. So it's easier to work on top of it. I 
this is a very nice sketch. I call it a sketch. Some people would maybe even call it a finished painting, but I think it's that would be too easy. Um, and what will happen for a while is uh, uh, lose all this just to kind of get it back in a different form, more clear. Turpentine and uh, Dalmach um, Harpix. Smells really good. Uh, I don't know how healthy it is. <coughs> so it's just got to dry for a little while and I'll just keep working on it. Okay, let me show you the next. is I take some, a lot of, of this medium, 70% uh, turpentine and 30% um, uh, cooked uh, linseed oil. I make um, almost like an aquarelle, uh, make it very thin, very thin, a lot of oil, and then I do something that can horrify people. I just go over like this, and this is I do this because I want the textures. You see, I just kind of fuck it up, go over the whole thing, and what happens is that. The colors now kind of fall into all the cracks, all the brush strokes. Um, and it's, it's quite important to give it a, that it's kind of dried if you work on it as hard as I do now. Usually I have a bigger brush and I go over the whole painting. But I'm going to work on this spot now, so I'm going to do it here. Now, it also brings out more shape and more, more, as I said, textures and contrasts. Now, this kind of seemed a little bit too much, but uh, now I don't use so much oil when I, I, I don't put so much oil on when I start painting. Now, this was just the first step. And what I do now is that I start, start taking away again. So, uh, <clears throat> I need some paper. So what I do, I take away most of it. So it's not too oily, but I kind of keep the, the depth I got from the, I keep getting all these textures and I see it and the oil is kind of now inside all the textures, all the, um, yeah, as I said, bumps and lumps. If you look at the 
old master paintings. You can see all the brush strokes and you can see all these thin layers of color on top of the thick ones and you can see how how the whole dynamic of the different layers are kind of making this this beautiful uh, natural feel to them. If you only lay one layer, uh, uh, it, it will just be flat. Yeah, I don't like that. Anyway, what I do now is that I start to scrape away more of the excess cover. Scrape away and get some of the, the, the light, lightest points will now start in the back here. Okay, and now, in a way, this oil thing has also mixed with the retouche family, so it's, it's not actually wet, it's just, it's just um, the color in there, so, yeah. So this was step number two. Now step number three is start painting. I'm gonna do that for a while. And yeah, okay. So so, so step three. Okay, building light. Uh, You always want to build uh, like a sculpture, as I've said probably a gazillion times before. I always start with a fresh palette, I have many of these. I just start uh, a new one every day. Uh, if you want to, if you have more colors left, you can actually keep them in the fridge on a mirror or something and they won't dry as fast. Anyway, what I do now is to start with, with these points of light, which I start with these points of light again, which are kind of ruined. And, uh, oh, that's a bad one. Need a better one. <clears throat> I need a bigger one. Yeah, and keep your tools close. And Anyway, point is, I want to start with, with the face, just with these points, which I just went over, so I get them back. These points are here. I will start filling them in later. Not now, the nose. Um, yeah, need better tools. Better tools. 
new brushes. Uh, so, I want to just keep going. Blending colors. Not actually blending, more cool, like grabbing. And now there are some, now it is kind of a bluish thing. So, what I can do now is just get the shadows out. No, not on the light points out because the thin layer of color now is kind of strengthening the shadow parts so it's easier for me to pull out the light. Eventually I will go, go over that too but it kind of leaves me with a um, easier task. Um, uh, kind of like this, I think. The nose is very, <laughs> the nose is very bright because there's a sunbeam hitting it right here, and has this. This skin in this has a very reddish orange tone to it because it was taken in the evening. Photographs were taken in the evening with my Pentax Az Aziz or six seven uh, with uh, the tungsten film. So the house a little, yeah. So I've been wondering, doing some, some um, some um, live screening and uh, uh, live painting real time on Twits or YouTube. Just see what happens. I have to get the right equipment. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I noticed that I have a hard time really concentrating about the painting when I'm talking. So I have to figure out a way to paint and then take pauses so I can answer people's questions. Anyways, just to bring out the light. <clears throat> sources in her fingers here that I really mm -hmm. finger actually touches her face which is very nice you see also using my fingers a little bit when I do some they say that um, William Turner used his nails and his fingers and his yeah you know what um, probably not his penis but uh, and a nail can actually be a nice tool. It's like a knife, and where you have just better control over it. Here's 
see now I I'm not gonna drag this light what I do now is that I go in here and I kind of fish it out like this I don't, because she's holding her hand like that and you're getting this many people would do like this and it doesn't give the same feel to it because everything in nature in the universe are shapes and, and they have some kind of seems to me anyway they have some kind of direction to them landscape is like this way or the sky is like this way or uh, just how it feels well that how it feels to me I don't know I think it's scientific and the universe is just mathematics anyway mathematics and, and uh, matter now you see I've dragged it down I dragged it down <laughs> and um, to get more shadow here I can do it a little bit different way or we'll also drag it a little bit down there like this but I prefer to go in with different directions which in the end of course disappears because or well, not disappears but uh, painted over again and again and again so it becomes a more holistic painting no. holistic I don't know the word so I drag like this like this And I always keep building the thickest parts. I build more and more and more so that in the end I get this sculptural feeling to it. Flat paintings are so boring. I want there to be some texture and some something that actually shows to where an artist there I mean if you want to paint paintings that look look like prints well what's the point really I like there to be some paintedness to them We see the light coming, starting to come back on. There's a bone here, so just mark that. Now I need to go back to the color I used as a, um, in the beginning and I just start creating this round shadow There's a this is a landscape and there's a small house in the background 
and the sun is actually hitting that house and it's right over her shoulder so there's a small light, point of light just behind her shoulder hair that kind of brings out the shape so of course we can't mow down after a while and uh, I will paint the greens in the background and everything strengthen yeah. mm -hmm. and how many colors you use in every painting is actually compared to what what you are painting um, When I'm using a photograph, it is limited to the to the colors in the photograph. I don't try to add anything or take anything away. I just try to paint what I see and use it as a as a way to mold. Mold it. Blah blah blah. Mm. A friend of mine tells me that I'm talking too much, and I probably do. But then again, that's me, so here I am. See, I use the background here, the landscape, to explain the shoulder. Not shoulder, I mean, um, yeah, this one. And also in the background, you have the kind of greenish, bluish, deeper sky. That also is used to get her oh, come out of the painting. As you see, the sky down here, very far, far back there, but, and I tried to keep it down, but right here, where you have, right behind her head, you can actually use some texture and sculptural paint to bring it out. That goes all the way down here. And kind of mixes with this. Years. and just put them back on again do some and it kind of brings her out but then what is amazing to do is doing the lightest parts um, So bright, so thick. And I just go in here and I just start to get the color and you see I'm drying it down now.
also go this way because there are different when you have a fold that goes that way you can do it like this and in between them you just go like this so you differentiate these two from each other the kind of reddish color which means that the shadows are kind of bluish bluish reddish maybe in there there's a saying you have to kill your darlings and that is exactly what you have to do over and over again when you paint, I'm going to try to create a painting. I see people put in all the details way too early. And it's really not necessary because if you're going to create a good painting, you have to paint over it again and again anyway. So, what's the point? Anyway, you can do it if you like, but you have to paint. So now, let's see here. She has some blondes in there. It's kind of flowery things that I would put on much later. When I do that, I will talk a little bit about uh, how I make things look a little bit fluid, like a aquarellish feel to it. But that's in a different part of this video. concentrate so I'm gonna turn off the camera and next time you see it it's a jump in space and time Tear my way, tear myself away from it, which always are difficult when you are getting into it. And there's a ah, oh, that is nice. You have to see this. The sun is actually hitting behind here in a, in a small strip that goes on like this. Now, of course, it was too much.
Okay. Almost okay. Okay, I hope this were a little bit instructive. Okay. Right, it causes different behavior. I mean, I read the book and I've done this before in years past. I monitor how often I tell things like white lies and I realize, wow, I do this a lot more than I think I do. And the reason is to make things easier for us in the short term easier for me and them, frankly, in the short term, friends, family, etc. But once you stop, you start to see, well, people might see me as brash, but in the end, they appreciate it. And like you said, it makes you almost scandal-proof because weakness comes in pretending to be somebody, especially if you're a public figure, that you are not. And it makes you the bad kind of vulnerable. And the honesty that you mentioned before can really force any dysfunction, any sort of thing that's wrong in your intimate life to come to the surface. The example in the book, if you're in an abusive relationship, if you won't lie to others and they ask how you got that bruise or why you look terrible or things like that, I mean, it would cause you to come to grips with the situation very quickly. Drugs, alcohol addiction, lying is really a key component of addiction that goes untreated. And if you have no recourse to lying about things, you can really unravel things early enough to maybe make the damage not so severe. Yeah, oh yeah, I've experienced that in many ways. And I should to go back to something you just said though, about making it easier for yourself and easier for the other person in the moment. It's worth lingering on just the, the conception of easier for the other person for a moment, because it's often making it easier in the sense that you're telling them what they want to hear or telling them something more pleasant than is in fact what's true, but you might also be causing them to waste a tremendous amount of time or encouraging them to waste a tremendous amount of time where you could be helping them to get their life on track in a way that other people around them aren't. So the classic example for me is when someone asks you to give your opinion of their book or their screenplay or you know, something they've been working on. So let's say you read their book and you think it's terrible. Obviously, it'd be much more convenient for both of you if you read their book and you thought it was great, because then you can say it was great, and then you feel good, and they feel good, and your friendship is intact, and there's no problem. But if a friend of yours comes to you with something they've spent a lot of time working on, and you think it's terrible, if you think you're helping them by sparing them this momentary discomfort of you not supporting their rosiest conception of themselves, yeah, I think you really need to look more closely at that because I've been on both sides of this. And I can tell you that the people who didn't give me honest feedback or just didn't have good critical feedback to give were far less helpful to me than the people who said, listen, you have to tear this thing down to the studs. This is awful. You're lucky only I saw this. <laughs> Other people who aren't their friends are not going to spare them their criticism. The way to think about it in these cases of creative work what you're doing for your friend is this thing is not yet out in the world, right? It's a different circumstance when it's out in the world and there's nothing they can do about it, then you're having a different conversation, which is arguably harder. But if you're still in a position to give them some help by giving them honest feedback, then you really should give that feedback. And you can always give it in a way that acknowledges that it's just your opinion. You know, you're not omniscient. You're not the ultimate arbiter of what is good in the world. But if you have a an informed opinion, and you have reason to think that other people are going to share your view of the things they're getting wrong, well then, you should really just be candid. And if the person you're dealing with is at all an adult and actually wants to be spared future embarrassment, well then they're going to be grateful for your candor, and they're actually going to find the friends who just glad-handed them and sent them on their way totally useless. It's always interesting to look back on the praise one received for things that one now thinks were terrible. Imagine you've got two friends. You're doing something you really hope is going to be great. You show it to two friends, and the first friend tells you, oh, everything is wrong with this, and it's going to take you a lot of effort to make it right, but you got to get in there and do it because in its present form, this thing is terrible. And you wind up agreeing with him, right? And you do the work, and you make all those improvements. But you have this other friend who saw your first draft and said, I think it's great that person is far less valuable to you in that capacity. And 
It would be an irony if the person was simply lying to you, thinking he was going to spare you some discomfort. You know, I think if you were going to ask for that criticism, then you have to be honest and wanting to hear real criticism. There are people who ask what you think, and they actually don't want to know, right? These people are functioning like children, in a way. The one thing that happens once you become more and more committed to being honest is you train the people in your life. They know what to expect from you. I don't find people coming to me anymore who don't actually want to know what I think, and that's also very helpful. And then people return the favor. If you're someone who was really honest in criticizing what somebody was doing, and then you need criticism of your own work, well, then you can get it. You know, there are people who are locked and loaded, ready to uh, return in kind. At a certain point, you're desperate for this because it's just, why would you want anything else? You're not going to be spared this feedback once you go public with your work. It goes back to what you're saying. When we lie to people, we treat them like children because it fails to prepare them for encounters with others, the public, for example, who will treat them like adults and won't be as kind to spare their feelings short term. And research shows, even in our own intimate relationships, that lies are correlated with less satisfying relationships. So that short term over long term, like you and I have both discovered firsthand, and me especially more recently after having read the book, once you commit to telling the truth, you start to realize how rare it is. You start to realize that, wow, I only know a few people who will tell me the truth about their truth, about pretty much anything. And honest people's opinions become worth more because they're trusted. So link this back to our charm principles. It is better to be trusted than nearly liked because it's easy enough to get people to like you. It's hard to get people to trust you. One is certainly, in my opinion, more valuable than the other. Oh, yeah. Trust is certainly in, in this domain when we're talking about relationships that matter. And again, we started talking about people who managed to function really with a different kind of currency of trust. I mean, someone like Trump, they're trusting him to be himself, but they're really not trusting him beyond that because it's impossible. What he's saying can't be squared with what he said five minutes ago. Trust is the most important thing here. And one thing that I'm happy about with respect to my own audience, in large measure, the result of having written that book, Lying, you know, I've gone on record as someone who just doesn't lie. And I now have a core audience of people who really are engaged with my work, who have just the shortest views imaginable with respect to any perceived inconsistency or lack of intellectual honesty on my part. I've got the anti-Trump audience. These are people, the irony here is that I'm often accused of having a cult of followers who will just take my side in any argument, you know, will just flame people on social media in ways that are not warranted. But what in fact I have is many core readers and listeners to my podcast who just have zero tolerance for what they perceive as a contradiction or intellectual dishonesty. So, let's uh, see, I'm um, um, getting further into it, oh, getting further into it, and um, uh, yeah, so what I do now, it's going to go back and forth here, so I'm getting these Painting that clothes texture. I'm downloading some shirts. <laughs> My computer is making noise. that way now because with this I go the change and 
and it's going to be more in the background. So I have to keep it down, I'm not putting on any thick layers behind there. Only thick layer is going to be down there. The cloth there. And this way. So there also some greenish. Actually, what I use here is a lot of Prussian blue, and I mix it with uh, other bluish colors and some. So a little bit of black and putting in some reddish and. The, the greenish appears as a consequence of of, uh, of all the reddish or the um, warm colors in the cloth and in the skin because the sun actually came in and hit her directly so and of course I did that on purpose when I or took these photographs. Many years ago I took these photographs now, actually. I just keep on coming back there. It was quite nice. And they have been quite popular. So shape now to so get it right then I keep on going over it again and again so in the end it, everything just glides into everything else like this I said a gazillion times before there's only one way to learn how to paint and that is to do the work and learn by your own mistakes what I can do is only point you in, the, in some some direction and and I also of course recommend oil paint Yeah. So here I am working with the face, uh, fingers, face, and some detail. I have gone over the painting or the dress and stuff, but I need to do these things before I start <coughs> working on the surroundings. I always have to start with, if I want to do some detail, I always have to start with the details first. Because this is the most exhausting thing. And you want to be at your best. When you do so, surroundings are more relative, really. Um, but things like faces and hands and stuff like that is not that relative. Well, it's not really relative at all, but I guess you know that. So, that's what I'm doing now. Hmm. 
Because this is a new thing that I've seen, it's called Slow TV. <laughs> and actually, President Obama was talking about it in a speech when he was in uh, this party with the Norwegian government. And um, he said in Norway, we have programs where you can watch a boat or a train traveling and that's it <laughs> it's called slow TV I guess this is kind of slow TV in a way um, maybe we should start streaming or something start doing slow TV will be more layers so let's just get it right Is that in the end things just have to fade into one another uh, and you can't really do that in one go because it will turn into mush it won't be a pretty picture so has to be built gradual, gradually. Mm -hmm. Now it's hard for me to get the right perspective when I'm making the videos because I'm seeing it straight in and you're seeing it from so it may get a little bit strange angle. Uh, to something you just have to live with I guess <clears throat> oh, so Whew. it's hot it's like 27 degrees in Oslo today and it's hot even in here and it's a cellar place and usually it's it's not hot on here. Today it actually is. Just whoosh, whoosh, in a way, and it gets a more natural feel to it. longer 
much the same mark as uh, Da Vinci. It's better quality, but I just need to. I actually used this on work over here, and now it's a problem because I keep on bumping into it. And you shouldn't do that. You should plan the painting better so you don't actually want to paint here, you paint here, and then you paint there because it's going to be a mess. I wonder how is this for a Muslim artist? I mean, this is pigs here, and, and is that haram? <laughs> really hate religion. It makes so much, so many false assumptions. God hates ham. Yeah, right. Of course that must be true, I mean, of course God hates ham, I mean, why not create an animal that you hate, or you tell humans that they are supposed to hate, so much bullshit, so much bullshit in the world, so sad. Reminds me of the series Battlestar Galactica, where in the last series they went a couple, two, three years ago, ah, uh, four years ago. Well, anyway, almost all of humanity is wiped out, and they are, have some spacecraft floating around, fighting the Cylons, and then they start arguing among each other and start killing each other instead of fighting the enemy and making babies and it's kind of what humanity humans do we fight each other for absolutely no good reasons at all and we are ruining the habitat, our habitat, and we are floating around the sun. This is a hydrogen fusion machine, big nuclear explosion, and we are bickering about. Bullshit. Just fucking bullshit. Makes me angry. Yeah. Zoom. Und, und hier. <laughs> okay. Oops. So glad as I grow older. 
I enjoy more and more being alone. Just doing my work. I'm not having a bunch of noise. in my head all the time telling me to go out and party and find girls and just relax and enjoy the ride and that's what I'm going to do till I drop yeah Okay, later. Yeah. Well, I'm working on a background now, and there's some houses in the background, and I'm trying to keep them loose and keep them um, in the distance. And then I, I'm gonna go close with the video when I'm finished with it, and just talk a little bit about it but it's all only like grabbing color and and um, uh, thinking like an ex expression impressionist the impressionists and put on lights as you see that the light is coming that way so you have to get the but then again you don't want to you want that don't want that light to be as bright as this light, so you have to uh, kind of keep it down with the hue or the color. Uh, that is also what you do when you uh, put a lasso. You see, I'm just touching it directions, and um, you don't want everything to. All the light, you know, this this light is in the distance. It's actually the same as in the universe. If you see distant stars, the red light shift changes compared to the distance and the speed. Um, and it's the same principle on Earth in nature. It's like. Uh, some waves in the way. So I go over here with some shadows. Now it's obvious, must be obvious, why I can't show you the whole paint process. Uh, I have been wondering about starting to stream on Twits or on YouTube and people could maybe donate and ask me questions like if you want to donate like one or one dollar to a million it doesn't matter it's just a token uh, if you feel you learned something from my videos well, you don't have to, you can ask me questions, I'm happy to answer all your questions. It's kind of my contribution to, my small contribution to humanity, if you know what I mean. Give something back, as Arnold Schwarzenegger said. Give something back. <laughs> Anyway, the point is now I'm going to do some in the background and when I do this is you don't wanna you don't wanna you don't wanna sky that is too perfect. You, you want it to live a little bit. So these pencils, these um, uh, or brushes uh, the um, the bore shit. Chris didn't shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, welcome to 
to my life. Uh, so, you don't want it to be too perfect. And these brushes are giving you some texture. When you put on the colors, you have to work back and forth and you kind of push colors into one another and you get all these strokes and if you so you see I'm kind of mixing the color on the canvas first it's too bright and then I just This is how I go over the whole thing. Now it's quite dry here, so, so I have to work with it a while until it kind of I find the right tone. And that's what I do. I, I work on it until I find the right tone. But you don't want to use these feather brushes if you want a if you want a very nice painted surface. You don't want this these paint these um, these um, yeah you know these feather like the the ones you just brush everything out and it becomes this ah, it looks nice but you know, it's, it, it doesn't rock it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't do anything and it's so fucking boring you need to get get it get to live like the sky. The sky is many colors in, in, in the sky. It's reddish and it's green and it's red and it's orange and it's yellow and it, it's compare how uh, down here is more reddish then it's kind of greenish and then go over to a brighter blue and and there's so many colors and you have to just try to see that and, and, uh, and understand how it works. Because I was working on this yes last night, and it actually is so thin that it almost it's almost dry, and then it's that is why when you work on a on a sky like this or a whole. I work on uh, things around the model, around the figure. Try to put in many hours so you can go over the whole thing in one go. Because when the when the color is wet, it's easier to kind of mold all the different colors to get them crisscross. When I get it dry, I can actually start molding like this again. No, I mean, sorry, make it uh, not dry but wet. I'm Norwegian. I'm, it's my second language. I never, I wasn't good at school. I was good in in talking, like talk English, but I couldn't write it. So, but I I can hear that my vocabulary isn't as good as it should be so maybe I should <laughs> start reading more books and and uh, get better at it it's easier to communicate when you actually know the language the lingo most Norwegians I mean the politicians are horrible to listen to when you are talking even the Prime Minister is just a little... I'm listening to tons of... of 
of uh, science lectures and documentaries and stuff. So I guess I've learned my English through watching movies, documentaries, audiobooks. I'm, I'm a dyslectic, uh, partly dyslectic, also write with both my hands. So when I come. Actually, this doesn't work for me. I was wondering, starting to train, since I can write with both my hands, I should be able to paint with both my hands. But I mean, the brain works like works. Connects the, the neurons compared to what you do. So I could actually learn it. I, I used to weld. I was a welder, and I used to weld with both hands and yeah, I have to have some light <sighs> so maybe I should try and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna buy myself a piano start learning how to play the piano I've been thinking about it for many, many years, like 15 years, since I saw the Gary Oldman and the, I saw Gary Oldman play uh, Beethoven. It's a beautiful movie. I recommend it. Gary Oldman as Beethoven. It's a beautiful movie. Anyway, and I love Rachmaninoff and I love all the classics. And, so I would like to to find out how how to do it. I should just buy one and start. I know nothing, next to nothing. But if I could go from welder to painter, I lived it over twenty years. You know, all the partying and a waste of time that I used to do. I should be able to learn how to play the piano. Yeah! Blah, blah, blah. I feel great, actually. And, uh, yeah. So, this is this small video, uh, this short video is... It's not going to become so short, but this video is a part of a bigger one, so you just have to watch it. <coughs> so, now it's a little bit more, I've uh, been painting for a while and it's more fluid when you put on the color it's more susceptible to take in more colors so um, remember to be careful with black because I haven't I don't use any black in, in the sky not to suppress the colors uh, or anything <coughs> I use reds and I use uh, the alisaline and kaplak as it's called to break them down and I mix them together so I get the kind of deeper tone like this Uh, people tell me that they like the light in my paintings and it kind of comes down to how you use the colors. Uh, you have to use the colors as nature does. You have to understand how, how shadows appear out of the primary colors. Um, Light until dark. And stuff. 
I'm actually going to paint on the other painting now for six hours. The Victoria with red rose, red wild rose. Ah, so I'm going to let this dry for a couple of days and then I'm going to go over it again. Maybe I should make some fast-forward versions of these videos because people's um, uh, interest span <laughs> is quite short. I, I, the shorter the video, uh, more views. Ah, that's re really always true. The Victoria video with the red rose, red wild rose, has been seen uh, almost 130,000 times, and it is probably three hours long, two or three hours long, two hours long. In the case. And there's a new, and uh, the second part is coming out now to a YouTube near you. <laughs> so. The next layers, the last layers I do is when I make all the all the lines disappear into the background and I start to cross over for to soften the lines. But I also let some lines be hard, so it kind of gives it that three D feeling. I think too many of the figurative paintings are too much, too much in, inside and or. So they all the figures and the colors always feels like they are behind a glass glass wall or something, and I like them to be more real, more uh, come out and get you. So that is what is said about the night watch when it was finished. That the spear looked like it came out of the. Out of the painting, and it's because Rembrandt used the colors in the correct way, and he he put them up against each other, the yellows, the reds, the, and he put them up against each other in a way that gave it that 3D illusion. Brilliant, brilliantly done. And if you understand that, you can go quite a long way. as far as Rembrandt, but if you can touch on it in a lifetime, you should be pleased with yourself. <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, that was the thing. It's darker over here because the light is hitting here. So, in this end, I make the sky a little, give it a little bit more texture. So, it's not just the color or the the temperature and the, but it's also the texture that I give a little bit more. I I kind of pencil it more out here than I do there, and um, to kind of get a, that, yeah get it into the physical space too, or whatever you would say. Um, so that's why I I use the pencil, I mean, the pressure on the pencil is also different to what you do. You want to put it in, I push a little bit harder. If I want to want it to come more out, I kind of take thicker layers and just swoosh, keep molding. So, 
Maybe that's why I want to learn how to play the piano because I know the pressure and the tangent, tangents, whatever we call it, is is what make it personal. Every pianist has his own way of putting in the pressure, and the weights on the piano. film a little bit closer when I do the details so you can see how it's done. So with this, let's stop now and till next time. So today I'm going to do the last layer. So I start with my lasure and I use my bluish some reddish, uh, kaplak, or even cadmium red, and I just go over it like this to get it to live a little, and to get it down to a different level. You see now it kind of calms down a little bit. Uh, of course, I take way much of this afterwards and scrape it away. I'm going to make more depth than some textured work with. I'm probably going to use like eight hours or something for the whole thing. Of course, I'm not going to. Take it all. <laughs> It'll be a nightmare. So I just push down this, give it a little you know, reddish hue. What one can do is to also with these lasur layers, I can just you now have some aquarellish feel to it. You can actually go over a painting after. You have finished it and go in with these aquarelle, almost aquarelle. Of course, it's oil. It's, it's this um, mixture between uh, my uh, my uh, linen oil, cooked linen oil, and turpentine. It's seventy percent turpentine. Now, I just don't want, I want maybe a little bit there, but in the shadow, I can also go in and give it some more things. So, then, <clears throat> go in and I just Take away some more, just to snow stuff, not that much of it. Sounds brutal. See more textures are coming. You can see the brush strokes more. I was in a 
Frick Museum in uh, New York and looked at Turner. And I guess he has done some, some of these things. Because when you go in and you look at um, the different layers, different deposits, so you can actually see them in that way. So, okay, um, I'm going to start. Now, when you start a new layer, I'm going to do this. I have a totally clean palette. See this? I just cleaned it with Telton Time. I just cleaned it all the way so it's dry. And I just put on a new color and I do this maybe two or three times every day. I change the palettes and stuff because you. It gets greasy after a while and then you just lose control. So. so don't do that. You see I've been painting for six or seven hours now. You see the other palettes so that I used to look like crazy. So when I keep on painting on this, I just go back and uh, after this becomes more messy, I just take the colors from the other palette so we can actually get use, use the color and don't waste it. It's quite expensive color, uh, but white actually. <coughs> I knew there was something missing. So now we are talking. So where to begin? Well, I just begin somewhere and I just start painting and then I go into the flow and the rest is the rest just now in these layers I just I'm gonna keep this down so then I'm using the brush more like a I'm not giving it too much texture all the texture are in the light areas and this way you create both space in in the physical and and uh, just nuances and shadows and different colors I actually never learned to paint from by anyone, so, so I learned by the in, by intuition and doing a lot of mistakes. So I guess I still do a lot of mistakes that I don't even know about. But I maybe in one year or two years, five years or ten years, I will see. Oh shit! I should have done like this. But then again. It's the best way to learn to actually just fail. Fail, 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 and fail, fail, fail. That's the way to learn. Of course, <laughs> studying some uh, color circle and stuff like that could be also helpful. But when it comes to painting, when it comes to doing it, you have to do it to understand. Now this hasn't mustn't be too good because this is very good, so down here has to be more in the warm greenish, blueish, green, reddish, orange. Uh, blue, there is always, always uh, orange somewhere. You have red, the green is around, you just have to spot it. 
seen an album that's, that's really good. Pretty good. To give everything shape, the cloud has color. It isn't white. I see a lot of people, uh, amateur painters, say, "Oh, we're almost it's cloud." <laughs> don't don't paint symbols. You have a symbol in your head called cloud. Don't go there. Just look at how it is. Look at the nuances. Look at everything. Have a symbolic brain, a brain who you know, remembers by symbols, you know. And then I, yeah. Okay. The house with this, my brain, but it's also warm. Some more punch vividness. That's with my painting. I never learned to paint by a bomb, so I do go a little bit crazy in the colors because everything is intuition. See red, I just put on red. So it can be, I do doubt myself a lot. Okay. There's also a very bright light, it's right there. I'll give that a little bit more punch. It's a warm light because it's in the distance. So I do like this. Find the right color. I've been working now for two weeks. I haven't been training. I haven't been to cafes. I haven't been out. I haven't been doing anything except for now I'm starting to get a little bit you know the shiny movie, the cold work and no play. Well I'm getting there. Usually a eight hour day, eight to ten hour day would be perfect. To work twelve, fourteen, it's way too much of a time. I even forget to eat. Maybe lose some weight. <sighs> so. I sure I'm gonna eat some fish and some fruit today. So I need to go eat something now because of my blood sugar is dropping like crazy. When you're really gonna focus on exhibitions and stuff, you just have to go and focus on it. So I, I just turn my brain off. Usually I would be it's Friday night, so Friday morning actually it's like five in the morning now, and and I would be so restless to go out and look at pretty girls and socialize. And, but just turn that off. Switch. I don't drink much though, I drink maybe once a month, 
Now I've been drinking since my birthday, which is almost three months ago, two and a half months. So, I'm gonna have an exhibition with my brother. He does photography. Now, because he can go into these things and cool details, I'm gonna have an exhibition with my small exhibition. My brother, that's my, my home island, Kalame. So, that's why I'm working with this. Yeah, okay. Blah, blah, blah. I get the point. Yo, I'm still working here. It's now uh, two and a half hours actually since the last video, and I'm just keep on trying to move around some stuff. <laughs> it's not that other people don't see it, but as we say, it's like morals. It's what you do when other people aren't looking, and. Uh, I kind of like to like to have it correct, approximately correct anyway. So I don't like to take the easy way out. This one has to go in there. Damn! I can't even see that before. Now this one goes all the way in here, almost anyway, so yeah, it's going to be a mess. real place so it has to compute with reality you know the strokes and how it's painted that it's kind of a little bit more relative but when it comes down to getting the landscape correct and stuff it's not something I want to Compromise with. So, see, that's going to go down, down. There's no detail here, it's only impressions. So, in a way, it's very impressionist painted. Um, so I try to avoid any symbols so just try to create some dynamic um, shapes and colors that can so that reminds you of um, natural shapes and the way I actually do that is to just keep on working on it and the sum in the end the sum of all the time you touch it leaves it quite natural so. natural so. and you don't want any sharp edges in the background you don't want to do sharp, has to be more fluid and uh, things like that. It's funny I always usually film it from the other side but something like that. 
the hell do I always do it from one side? That's strange. A man of habit. My head is so full of thoughts and stuff all the time that I have a tendency to go for the same thing. So I can always buy the same coffee. I always I don't stress by buying a lot of clothes or changing my style or anything. I just stick with it. personality. So it's strange that I love blue and she don't like blue. No, no that's too blue. Mm. I don't like blue. Why do I always have to paint blue? <laughs> well, because I like blue. <laughs> oh, mother. You see, I'm going back and forth in this manner to kind of get the direction. You see, the C is flat. If I did this, it would be wrong, okay? I'm going to paint every wave anyway, so there aren't any waves. So, I'm not a photorealist, so I don't even think I would be able to. <clears throat> People tell me, mm, it looks like a photo. Well, no, it doesn't. Or maybe if you take a photo and you show them that. by the telephone or something. You can see the textures, the colors and the, and the strokes might look like a photograph. Actually, I, I use the photograph as a tool, so I guess if I paint from a photograph, it will look like a photograph. Because there is a difference between the paintings that I do from still life, so model, and I do from from a photo. So, two different realities. Yes. Okay. I have a bigger room inside there. I'm going to start to paint more in there because the lighting in this room is because of the height of the roof, quite difficult. And I might also knock a hole in that wall so I can open up that. That would be brilliant. Oh, you see, I just. You know, it's like a dance uh, on the dance floor. Okay. The green 
notes and I read and I just do in a way the same thing as the impressionists do. Yeah. This my house. <laughs> People say stuff like, "Oh, that's my house." <laughs> so funny. Just a little print in the spot. Like, "Oh, that's my house." <laughs> to work myself down. So I'm going to pretend that I don't need to do any more. Shit. It's very important when you do this, if it's wet and wet, it's easier to create this natural uh, transitions from background to foreground. I know it actually feels like clouds, believable clouds. Clouds we can believe in. Mm -hmm. Change, we can't believe it. Yeah, right. So, okay. I'll work myself down. So, here I am with my palette. Uh, maybe you want to see that. Well, what I'm doing now is working here. I've been doing that for the last hour, or one and a half hour since I talked to you last. And what I'm doing is that I, now it's starting to get quite wet. So, what can happen if you work with a surface is that suddenly it dies. It loses its... Um, um, Loses the bang or loses, um, what do you call it? Um, it's not not dynamic anymore, it's gonna die. It's like it's nothing, it's just color up, color up, color. So, what one has to do is try to. Now, um, I'm working it down here. It's gonna be all dark here. It's coming in and the light, and then I'm going to work myself up there. So I always kind of structure it at this on this level, and then I go in and I make the surface wet or color. 
and I have to. It is strange because sometimes I actually feel that the first strokes are more dynamic, and, and they are. But I don't want to stop there, it would be too easy. So I'm actually killing that now. And what I have to do is first I'm going to bring it down and then I go slightly over it again and I bring it up again but only on the right spots so that is that is the process and um, I'm trying to here yeah. it's actually a C but I'm not going to paint every detail, so I just need to make an impression. It would be easier if it was totally still, that the water was, or sea was totally, or the beach was totally still, but it's a little bit ripples in the water, so you don't get that, that uh, glanced um, Reflection, and when you don't have that, it's much easier, and much more difficult to to create that impression of water. So, kind of over here is more like in the in the Alessarine Kaplak, the um, more warm blue like cobalt. No, not cobalt. Um, um, French ultramarine cobalt is, is what I can start to mix it with um, then I'm holding it and I just start to go over that so I get the on the color and I also then just lays it on top of the darkness underneath but and the um, Prussian blow is very cold and the tops of waves are cold because the shadow will be, will be and it reflects the greenish in the sky because it's an evening sky so it reflects that greenish reddish greenish color You know, I need more French or marine. <sighs> Maybe I should start streaming. Prussian blue is extremely green and you can, if you 
do some yellow in it. Becomes a really beautiful, vivid color. You'll see when I put it on, it's like it's green, but it's not actually gonna be on the surface right now. But I just want to show you this more, it's deeper. Well, maybe actually. So we find out. Then I mix in the um, lemon yellow in the Prussian blue. It's actually very hard to photograph these colors I use. It's always been a pain in the ass that I can't really get good photographs of my paintings because of the colors. It's easier to photograph them if you only use some nuances and not so much color. So no. It's a little bit too disturbing. So now some cobalt maybe Now I'm going down just to because you don't want to, some parts to just come jump out of it at you. You don't want that. mixing on the canvas actually. But I'm not mixing like this, I'm mixing like so I keep the dynamic of the colors.
Now, there are some small waves here. And I just go in here, start picking them up like this. Some over here. Just trying to make this foam here. This is exactly the same process, you just have to uh, mold it until it feels this right. I am wondering to take a couple of paintings and just go all out in detail and just use an extreme amount of time on a single painting. And I wonder if I'm just gonna have this beautiful photograph of a friend of mine who has two children. And I am wondering about making the ultimate instruction video from beginning to end, but also go total extreme in detail. Try to that will become my art of painting, like the Vermeer painting. Not that I have his skills, but I can always give it a try. In for the pound. In for the pound. In for the pound. So, now the sea is actually is hitting it here. So that will automatically be darker when it kind of comes here. So to create this illusion now, this contrast between the waves that break, I need to go this way, drag it. Well, this is how I'm thinking. I'm trying to think in directions all the time to get it to feel right. Guess you get my point. The breaks there, and also some lights coming here. Oh, too much. It is funny because painting is like playing the piano. It's like you have to kind of foresee the next, the pressure of a brush colors you have to learn how to foresee what happens and that, that is what people are fighting in the beginning uh, I'm fighting it now I'm fighting it, I'm fighting it every day but this is the main problem and the only way of getting there is actually just paint and connect neurons in your head so you know, Motor, motor skills becomes better. It is like doing martial arts, martial art, or whatever skill it must be. You have to connect the neurons and train them to keep them stay stay connected. Because sometimes, if it a while, you start wondering, can I really do this anymore? You know, some strange sound. Maybe I'm hearing ghosts. I'm talking to an imaginary person that is in that camera. <laughs> oh shit, I'm 10 hours now. Uh, shit. Was it 11? I don't fucking know. 
Anyway, these videos are becoming way too long, don't they? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm full of paints. The clock is now one in the afternoon and I'm shit tired. And I've been painting for 14 hours. So I think I need to get some sleep. Dry a little bit and do a little touch up because now it <coughs> all the colors are kind of turning to mush. When I'm to get these the wet sand and uh, dry sand to. Light together. See how light I'm holding it now. So my back hurts. <laughs> It's always hard to stop. That's the worst part. When to stop? See how the light pops up when I do that? That's why it can be time consuming. Such small things has a big impact to give it a punch. Just can't let it go. Feeling me now. That's not so interesting. <laughs> So, 
a little lump of sand there. And give it some spatial feeling. But these are minor details, so it's being yellow. Head is silent right now. more like a beach. So, doing a touch up, touch up on this painting. Now, just some minor stuff around. This is more expressionist painted, so it's not going to be that detailed.
and use thin lines. And you see the motions I'm using? With my, I'm trying to I'm trying to get natural motion. Like in nature. The wave like motion, so What's that way? Where does it end really? Uh, when it cuts into the into the shore. It's like a knife in a way. You don't really know with the edge of. to know where to go now because if I go further I have to I kind of start detailing something I have to start detailing everything and you can't lie it has to be on an expressionist or totally clear it can be both in a way well it, it can but if I start doing a lot of details here I have to start doing details over there then I'm off to a painting that will last me a uh, um, continue working with it for months, uh, not months but weeks maybe. But that's not the point this time. Uh, I'll have to keep it a little bit loose. And I have to deliver it today, so Yes. Just get some lights in here. My fingers. Experience the fingers. So the sun is coming in here, so I still have some light there. I won't feel right. Fuck it up. It's funny because when you have almost, I was finishing a um, still life today on a shell and a brick, and uh, I was talking to my father in the, on the phone when I was. Painting, and I said, "Oh, it's finished now." And then I did something. I have no fucking clue what it was. Three hours later, I was screaming. <laughs> I just that was a small painting, small one, and it drove me nuts. And I'm not even sure if I see the. But I think it became okay in the end. But I have to 
had to take away a lot of colors I put on it and, and just start over again. And it's because I did those, did that fucking extra brush stroke that kind of killed the, you know, when you have colors and light, you have to come to a certain point and you mustn't go over that point or because more, more bright colors doesn't mean more light. points and at that point there just boom it explains the elbow and then I link them together with a line comes down there and now I see that because of this this one can fall in so I have to pull that one out People wouldn't see the difference, but I see the difference, and that's the whole thing about being a, a scientist in a way. Because a painting like this is a it's not a science that I'm studying, but you have to study your own mistakes all the time. Yeah, that's better. <clears throat> and then in the end, you reach a point where you start seeing better, seeing your mistakes, correcting them. Maybe I should put on some more light over here. Maybe that would kill this one. You can try. Because the sun is really hitting that, that house. So I can try from there. There has to be something like that, just one point, and Funny, I always say when uh, people ask me how can and how I do it, and I always answer, I, I don't know, I just start and it kind of evolves. But when I'm talking to the camera, I'm actually starting to see that I am actually quite conscious of what I'm doing. It isn't all a coincidence.
Well, I think it became quite nice. So. Okay, thank you for getting to the end of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Uh, it takes time to make them, so please go to my Patreon and sign up for a dollar or five or even more if you can. Help my, me build up the channel by sharing it via social media, give a thumbs up, leave a comment. Also remember there is a small uh, painting uh, patron giveaway every month so if you sign up you can actually become an owner of a painting of mine.